Hello, hello, and welcome to this another episode in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm Marek Bulacic, and in this video, we're going to talk about exporting with the timecode and why would you use that uh, as well. So, there might be a couple of reasons why you want to export your videos with the timecode. And ah, just to uh, mention, the timecode will appear on your video. So, one of them might be that you want to have the timecode. On your video. So, for example, if I go here to the program monitor and if I go to the spanner icon in here, what we could do is we could say we could show audio time needs, for example. We've got a time code overlay during edit as well. So, you could actually see the time code from the video. Second reason, which may be uh, potentially a bit more useful <laughs> for most of us is you could export with the timecode so it creates uh, like a watermark which you can then send to your client you don't have to send them a low res video anymore you can send them a full res video and send them the video with the timecode which serves like a watermark and then when they want the final version of the video you'll need to send them the original final video later on so this could be like exporting with the watermark in a certain way okay and it's something we're going to do on the export we won't be doing it here inside uh, program monitor so i've got a sequence which i was working on recently about the captions you may have seen the video before okay <laughs> so if we just go to export so i'm going to go to file export media uh, or Control M on Windows, Command M on a Mac. And in the export dialog box, so let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see better. Right. We've got a number of tabs in here on the top. It's normally on video by default. But if you go to effects, you got this section here for the time code overlay. So I'm going to tick it to enable it. You get this time code overlay in here. Now, I move down a bit so you can see all the options available. You can choose where to position time code. So it could be say bottom left corner. But I think bottom center will be just perfect. You could even put it you know right in the center if you wanted to. So this would be more like a proper watermark. But let's say I'm going to keep it as bottom center. You could also offset it. So I could offset it on the horizontal and vertical axis, so I could push it higher or even a bit lower. So unlike with captions, for example, with the time code, you can place it pretty much anywhere you want within the frame. I'll set them back to zeros. Then you can choose the size. So you could make this bigger or smaller. So let's say, I think it was 15 was the default, so I'm going to keep it as the default. Then you've got the opacity, so you could make not the actual time code, but the background behind it, semi-transparent. There's one here. So you can make this, semi -trans this background semi-transparent. So if I drop it down to about 20%, for example. Then you've got time source, media file. So it's going to display the time code from the video on your timeline. Well, in this case, it's displaying the time code from my timeline. So as I move my playhead, say if I go here, for example, which is four second, uh, four minutes, 14 seconds, four frames, it's going to display four minutes, 14 seconds, and five frames in here. Okay. Now you can also choose generate time code, where you could specify the frame rate display for your time code. So mine is using 25 frames per second, where this was actually 24 frames per second, I think. Should be 24 frames per second. Okay. So go for 24 frames per second. Okay. You can also choose different ones. So, uh, and also, you can choose between drop frame or non drop frame. Okay. So that's where it's going to change from semicolons to colons in here. Okay. And you could also switch to frames. So you'll see the frame number. Mm -hmm. So it could be the actual time code, or it could be the frame number instead. So mine seems to be at frame 6354, for example. So it could be just a frame number in this case. Which might be easier, because the client may just tell you, 
The video you sent me, can you make it start at, say, 1766, for example? So it'll be just easier, okay? So if I just show you, one good, uh, uh, so if I export it here, uh, now, good question where it's going, so let me cancel. <laughs> where is it going? Let me just put it right on the desktop. Here we go, so put it right here. And let's just do a quick export, just to show you what it's going to look like. And, oh, actually I should have shortened it, so I'm going to pause for a second, and I'll come back in a second to show the actual video, so you don't have to wait. I'm following up on the previous uh, section here, so I'm exporting this video with the time code. <coughs> Excuse me. As you may have noticed, I did uh, shorten the time that's been exported. So I'm only exporting two and a half minutes of the entire video because otherwise it would just take too long. So I just got two and a half minutes, okay, and it's getting finished. I've also changed the format in the meantime, in case you haven't noticed, and. <coughs> We're going to have a look at it in a second. So if we're exporting with the time code generated as frames, which you can also change in your timeline. I'll show you how in just a second when it finishes exporting. And we'll have a look at it. So this is going to be like our watermark. Now just to show you back on the timeline, you know normally you just get uh, minutes, seconds, uh, frames and so on. However, you can right click on the time code and change it. So in this case, you could change it to, say, frames, excuse me. So for example, uh, say the client gets your video. So I'm going to have a look at the video here. I've got on the desktop, this one, time code. So I'm going to double click to open it, to play it. And we get this time code. So let's say the client is watching your video and they say, okay, can we start from say here, for example. So they want you to start this video from 1760. This might be just easier for them to digest and to share it with you than just using hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. <laughs> so you can go back to your timeline, go to frame 1760, just in here, and that's your frame 1760. And from this point, we can start uh, working on this video here. Okay, so this is just an example how you can export the videos with the time codes and you can have different types of time codes in here. You can change the frame rate for the time code as well or you can just use the default standard time code from your video, from your timeline. So mine is going back to hours, minutes, seconds and frames because that's what it was before here with no offset. Okay, uh, so. Hopefully this might be handy or might be useful sometimes. Maybe you just want to send the client your final video watermarked. <laughs> so this could be a watermark. Okay. Hope you find it uh, useful. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Marek Mulacic from MarekMulacic.com. And if you like the video, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Hit the button underneath the video. And thank you for watching. And see you soon on another video. Thank you for watching. That's it for now. Bye bye for now.